One thing that may surprise even diehard Witcher 3 fanatics is just how much great material is sitting in the files of the game that remains totally unused, never to be seen despite sitting there fully finished. There's a truly shocking amount of that sort of thing going on, and some of that cut content is not only extremely fascinating, but also hasn't been documented in video form anywhere. So I've had the idea of doing a video like this for a while, and what I've done is put together a ton of the most interesting material, hunted it down in-game using mods and other methods, and compiled it for you today. We've got everything, Letho, Triss, Ciri, Dandelion, Kira, even Roach content, which I'm sure is what you're all here for. This was very time consuming, as I'm sure I'll get into, but I definitely thought it was worth the effort so everyone can see this great stuff you almost certainly wouldn't otherwise. Now before I get into that, I do have a sponsor for today's video, Opera GX, which is a web browser built for people who like to game. Now I could bury you in generic scripted talking points right now, but I really have no reason to because after installing Opera GX and using it this past week, I've decided it's my new daily browser, mostly because it's so convenient. I guess I have to be somewhat specific, so one thing that I've personally found to be incredibly useful is the built-in sidebar for just about any social platform you can think of. So you can have Discord, Twitter, and even Twitch handy without having to constantly open and close tabs. You can even integrate YouTube Music, Apple Music, or Spotify into that same sidebar. And what's really cool is that if you're playing music and open a tab with sound, Opera will pause your music automatically and unpause it once you're finished. Switching from whatever browser you currently use to Opera is also extremely easy. They have a feature that allows you to import everything, like your passwords and browsing history, with just a couple of clicks. And any extensions you use from Google Chrome are fully compatible with Opera. I seriously recommend giving Opera GX a try. Like most of you, I had heard of it before, but now that I've finally given it a shot, I find it to be such an improvement over what I was using. If interested, you can find a link in my description to download Opera GX for free. And by the way, Opera is also available on mobile with many of the same features. Thank you again to Opera, and let's get to what you came here for, the cut content. Now because I'm sure people will be asking, this content can be restored in various ways. There are individual mods that fix specific pieces of dialogue or a small quest or two, the PC console can be used for certain things by entering exact commands, and there's also Brothers in Arms, an awesome mod that mostly fixes a ton of small bugs like weird NPC placement, broken journal entries, that sort of thing, but also restores some cut or bugged content, which I should point out, since this stuff is sitting there unused in the files, it's kind of hard to say which of it was removed on purpose, and what just isn't working for one reason or another. The end result is the same though, it doesn't show up in the game, so you never see it. Anyway, another thing to keep in mind with these fixes is that a lot of them won't work retroactively. What I mean by that is if you try to restore something in, let's say, Novigrad, in a lot of cases you have to start from a save before you've ever even been to the Velen slash Novigrad map at all, so before you've ever even left White Orchard. You'll then need to get all the way to that point in the game where the restored content is to access it. I think you get the idea as to why this video took so long, even though I've had it in mind for months. So I'll be tackling what I have for you today area by area, starting in Velen with Letho and his little quest line. At the end of it, Letho fakes his death by paying off an arbalist to shoot him in a non-fatal spot, and then ingesting a venom that makes him appear extra dead. He tells you about this after he regains consciousness. It's time to end it. Once and for all. Found Vasto's gang and paid off his arbalist. You just witnessed the rest of the story. Now, you never get any more information on Letho's plan other than he somehow bribed this gang's arbalist. But there's an extra conversation that was cut where you can later ask Letho about his plan when you next see him, just before the Battle of Kaer Morhen. How much did you pay the Arbalist? You know, the one who killed you? Not one crown. I found out there was a Ben of Kavir in Vesto's Band of Merry Men. See, a while ago I met Ben's father, saved his life. He was a master archer from Kavir, and I'd heard Ben took after his father in that respect. So I contacted him. We decided that if Vester ever tracked me down, Ben would shoot me before any real fighting broke out. Risky as plans go. Is it? Only thing I feared was someone besides Ben wanted to check if I was really dead. Or make sure I was by bashing my skull in. But a bit of fear is a small price to pay for freedom. I feel like this one was definitely an intentional removal because it's kind of messy. Keep in mind, Geralt kills the Arbalist if you don't defuse the situation after Letho fake dies. In that case, with the extra backstory, you butchered the son of Letho's friend accidentally, and then Letho just doesn't mention it. 
It also makes Letho look very stupid for not letting Geralt in on his plan with the Arbalist beforehand, because Geralt fighting them to see if Letho can be saved is a pretty predictable outcome if you remember how that quest plays out. As cool as the conversation is, you can see why it was cut, it's a lot simpler for him to just have paid the guy off without any extended backstory. Okay, let's jump to a small side quest in Velen called Caravan Attack. There's not much to this quest, you come across a traveling merchant whose guards have turned on him. If you help the guy, you'll learn that he's on his way to Crow's Perch to trade with the Baron. Anyway, there's a cut conversation in this quest that usually isn't there, where Geralt can blame the merchant for the guard's betrayal by accusing him of not paying them enough. Probably decided you weren't paying them enough. Nonsense. I paid them more than they're worth. A rumor went about that ghouls and other such monstrosities prowled the roads. They demanded more, as no one else dared ride this way. Think these boys could have handled some monsters? They fell to a solitary witcher, so I truly doubt it. There's not much to say about this one, just thought it was an interesting back and forth. Okay, let's jump to Novigrad, where we'll be spending the bulk of this video. Let's start with a couple of cut pieces of content having to do with your introduction to Dijkstra. The first is small but kind of funny, and the second is amazing. So, when you first enter Dijkstra's bathhouse, his bookkeeper, Happen, will make you strip down to nothing but a towel. There's a short little piece of dialogue here that doesn't work in the playable version of the game, where Happen gives you some advice if you try to leave wearing just the towel. If I might be allowed a comment, sir, it's not commonly accepted in this city to stroll about nude. I'd advise you to don some clothing. Okay, that one was pretty small, but the second detail is incredible. It takes place just after Geralt reunites with Dijkstra, not realizing it's him until he physically sees the guy, because Dijkstra was using an alias, Siggy Reuven. There's a cut conversation that was originally supposed to take place here, where Geralt can acknowledge the fact that he hasn't seen Dijkstra in a very long time. How are you, Reuven? Disappeared for a few years there, only to reappear here in Novigrad? Oh, I've been here, there. Spent some time in Zeracania, matter of fact. Hmm. What did you do in the desert? Sought oneness with nature. Magical place, really. But I missed civilization, so I'm back. Aim to plant roots in Novigrad, become a respected citizen. And who knows, someday, maybe even a town councillor. This one has to be bugged. It's such a great little conversation that beautifully bridges the gap between when we last see Dijkstra at the very end of the books and when we run into him again in The Witcher 3. As it stands, the surprise of seeing Dijkstra is kind of brushed over, and I've always felt like something was missing there. I do wonder if there's any chance that the Enhanced Edition will officially restore some of this content, because I refuse to believe that was intentionally cut. Speaking of things that are probably bugged and not removed on purpose, let's move on to a little conversation near the portside gate of Novigrad, one that unfortunately doesn't work without mods, where a handful of witch hunters are discussing a certain red-headed sorceress. Yearning for the Interrogate witches all day? Is that what you want? Well here, we're pricks standing to attention with naught to do. I'd Ooh. be of some use there. That ginger sorceress has been sighted near the port. Who knows? We could run into her. Heh, <laughs> ramen supper, I Then you could use you. her as you see fit. Of course, they're talking about Triss, and I also have two little conversations directly with her that are in the files, but not in the game. The first can only be accessed after being restored if you don't allow Menga's men to torture Triss. In that situation, as many of you will know, you instead have to ambush one of Menga's spies to get the info you need on Dandelion. If you have to do this, Triss tortures the guy, and at the end you have two options. Tell Triss to kill him or to wipe his memory, because either way, he's seen too much. As good as lit the pyres with Menga in the square. He deserves to die. But, but I helped you. I helped- Theron and Gal. What was cut is a little conversation you can have with Triss after this event if you told her to kill him. With this conversation restored, if you visit Triss at her house after the incident with Menga's spy, you can ask how she's doing. Feel alright? Hmm, so-so. Why do you ask? Matter of that agent. Still bothering you? Of course. Pretty damn badly. I don't want to be like them. You're not. Never will be. Believe me. Ugh, Geralt. If you only knew what I think. What I feel when I see the next pyre. When I find the bodies of friends and adepts massacred so badly I can't possibly identify them. If you knew, you wouldn't be so sure. 
Hmm. Maybe we should talk about something else. Gladly. I was about to ask the same. This one was probably an intentional cut, and here's why. Something you might not have noticed, which is an amazing Triss detail, is that if you tell her to kill the agent, she pretends to but ultimately doesn't listen. After the cutscene ends, you'll notice that the lettering above his character model is blue, implying that he's still alive. And you might say that's just a bug, but you can actually go over and inspect the guy. Looks alive. To be clear, noticing he's still alive has nothing to do with cut content, it's just a great little detail to do with this quest. The conversation with Triss that would have taken place afterwards might have been cut because it's a little confusing if you notice she actually spared the guy. Triss being upset makes sense either way, but it would be a little distracting for Geralt not to bring up the fact that she let him live when she's so upset and thinking she's a monster. Maybe CDPR didn't decide to have Triss spare him until later on in development, and at that point it would have just been easier to take the conversation out entirely than risk confusion. While it is interesting to hear, it's not really necessary for Geralt to ask how she's doing. Okay, Triss fans are eating good this video because I have another cut conversation with Triss, and this one takes place at the very beginning of A Matter of Life and Death, the Masquerade Ball Quest. For some reason, this option isn't normally available, but in the files there's an extra dialogue choice where you can ask who Ingrid Vagelbutt is, after Triss tells you she's supposed to meet one of Ingrid's servants elsewhere in Novigrad. Who's this Ingrid Vagelbud? The Vagelbuds are one of the city's most influential families. Somewhat atypical, the women have been in charge for generations. Patricia Vagelbud's the current Mater Familius. Ingrid's her daughter. Know her personally? No, seen her, that's all. And I've heard rumors. She's admired in Novigrad for her business acumen, and adored for the lavish balls she throws at the family estate outside town. Though the balls probably serve her business interests in some way. This one is probably just bugged, and I'm guessing the option is supposed to be dependent on if you do the quest Carnal Sins before A Matter of Life and Death. Carnal Sins is the Novigrad serial killer quest that eventually takes you to the Vagelbutt estate. If you do that quest first, you'll meet Ingrid before ever helping Triss, so it wouldn't really make sense to ask who she is. The other way around though, it makes a lot of sense to ask who exactly Ingrid Vagelbutt is, because Triss just throws a ton of information at you about her, and you're just like, who even is this? But for some reason, that dialogue option just doesn't show up no matter what. Okay, next I have two little pieces of cut content that are both related to the quest The Plays The Thing, the one where Priscilla and Geralt put on a production to lure out an old Doppler friend. The first little cut detail is an extended conversation you can overhear when you first enter the theater to meet Arena, the owner. In the base game, the conversation ends here. Well, what was wrong that time? I don't know anymore. It simply needs more fire. Now what's pretty cool is that an alternate and extended version of this scene does exist. In the final game, the conversation was trimmed down for some reason, but here's the full version. More fire! But let's pause for now. Rest a bit. Where do you want to go? Golden Sturgeon or the Seven Cats? I'll not set foot in the Sturgeon. The scum they employ to serve patrons there. <laughs> Admit it, you rise for that serving wench at the Cats. You're to return for rehearsal today, is that clear? Not to worry. We'll Cursed mage there. hunters. Get required. This is actually kind of great, it sets up the one actor as being an unreliable drunk, which is something that's important later on when you're choosing who you want as your prince actor in the play. If you go with the drunk guy, he doesn't show up sober, and it causes a problem. Such a shame Maxim went on stage inebriated after all. Some of the crowd demanded refunds. So I'm not sure how many diehard Priscilla fans are out there, but I also have a bit of cut Priscilla content that also happens to be related to the theater troupe. For one reason or another, a conversation with Priscilla was removed, where you're able to ask her how the troop is doing later on in the game. So, Irina's troop managing alright? They continue to stage our play. Benedict Cumberbone plays the Witcher now, but all agree it's just not the same. Now this one might have been intentional, I mean there's no way of knowing for sure when this quote would have become available, but something that's always been a little weird is how the end of the quest Reason of State uses the theater as a meeting point after the assassination, and when you're making plans before everything goes down, the place is described as being abandoned. Need a place where we can wait it out. Thought of that already. Remember Madame Arena's theater? Abandoned now, not a soul looks in there. It's never explained how or why the theater goes from doing really well to having been deserted for some time by Act 3, and that's something that's kept me up countless nights. 
My thinking is because Reason of State was changed quite a lot in development, I mean for one it was supposed to take place before you ever even found Ciri, I'm just wondering if using the theater as a meeting point was kind of a last minute decision, because the writers needed a place in Novigrad instead of Oxenfurt, and that quote with Priscilla was a casualty of Arena's theater needing to be abandoned for the end of Reason of State to work. That's just a theory though, I could be totally wrong. Okay, it's Roach slash Gontaro Dim Time, and you might be wondering, what possible cut Roach content could there be that overlaps with Master Mirror? Well, the first bit I have is Roach solo content, and then we'll get to the Gontar stuff. So to start, there are a bunch of Geralt quotes that aren't working that were intended to be heard if you cast Axie on Roach while riding. Take a listen. Calm down, Roach. Now, now. There, there. Everything's alright. Easy. The second bit of Cut Roach content has to do with the saddle Gontor Odim gives you if you choose it at the end of Hearts of Stone. Tell me what reward you've chosen. Wanna be fast. So fast no one will ever catch me. Hmm. Interesting wish. I think I've just a thing. Take this. Place it on your steed and you will ride swift as the wind. This saddle is supposed to have a totally unique set of Geralt dialogue, but for whatever reason, none of it works even though it's all there in the files. Be warned, if you've played The Witcher 3 a lot, it's very weird to hear these alternate roach commands. Where's the fire? Ease up. Whoa. Slow it down. Whoa, Devil Spawn. Nice and slow now. What the hell's gotten into you? Slower. Yeah, yeah, faster, faster! Give me it all. Get going. Full speed ahead. Show me what you got. Come on! Now run. Fast. Giddy up. Ha! Yeehaw! To combine those two roach details, even Axie is different with Gaunter's saddle. Easy, easy. Hey, it's nothing. It's fine. Stop. Enough. You ought to be spooking them. Come on. All over now. Since we're talking about Gaunter, which is related to Hearts of Stone, why don't we cover an entire cut quest from that expansion? It's small but interesting and has to do with the Rune Rite, the guy who can greatly enhance both your swords and armor in exchange for everything you own, have owned, or ever will own. This guy needs money and resources from you in order to get his services up and running again, and usually how this goes is you give him 5,000 crowns, then fetch him some jade from a nearby deposit, and then you need to give him 10,000 more crowns and another 15,000 after that. Only then does he grant you the privilege of giving him even more money to upgrade your gear. Anyway, a small quest was cut that begins just after you give him the 10,000. Here's the intro. Pay night crystal I shall need also. Huh? Pay night. A mineral? In my lands quite rare, here impossible surely to find. Lenses I make from it. The powder residue I blend into my mixtures. <sighs> See what I can do. Pay Knight's too rare to just find it lying around. Need to go to Novigrad, ask the right merchants. You have to check with three merchants, and two of them won't have it. Bye. No Pay Knight here. Need to ask someone else. So long. Damn Pay Knight. Looks like I gotta try another merchant. This third guy, the one who seems to have everything important in Novigrad, will have it in stock, and you can then return to the Ophiri Mage and give him the Pay Knight. An eye you should cast. Find one to your liking, perchance. I might. First, got some painite for you. So, nothing holding you back now. From making mastercrafted runes, you mean? Much more coin I will need to do so, sadly. I'll just say that even without this quest, there's already a level of unintentional comedy with the rune right when you consider how much money you have to give him, only for the guy to then make you pay ridiculous prices for even his most basic services. So I can definitely understand where they cut a small fetch quest where he makes you do even more for him without even the tiniest shred of gratitude. There's like a hundred merchants who give Geralt permanent discounts for doing them tiny little favors. Yet you can put yourself into crippling and unfixable financial ruin for this guy and he can barely even muster up a simple thank you. Okay, so I promised Siri and Kira content, so let's jump all the way forward to the Isle of Mists, once you've rescued the Sleepy Dwarf and finally reunited with Siri. Geralt and Siri will then have what has to be the longest unbroken conversation in the entire game. But even so, this conversation does have a few cut pieces of dialogue, where you discuss both Kira and Dandelion. Each of those little mini conversations has multiple options, and here's the Kira dialogue. You landed with the crones. 
He ran into Kira. Kira? Kira met? What's she doing in Velen? She developed a taste for country life, decided to open a practice out there. Is that so? And does she lead her cows out to pasture at dawn? Milk them herself? <laughs> I'd love to see that. <laughs> so would I. Except she'd need a cow. A luxury that would attract attention in Velen. And Kira's fiercely determined not to do that. She's hiding from witch hunters. Kira met? What's she doing in Velen? Hiding from witch hunters. And here is the option to talk about Dandelion. And that way turned out to be Dandelion. A good friend, but not necessarily the wisest choice under the circumstances. <laughs> the best I could do. Besides, what do you have against Dandelion? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Go on. Besides, what do you have against Dandelion? Hmm, let me think. He's a chatterbox who's prone to hysteria and has about as much courage as a rabbit. Ideal partner for the heist of the century, really. Okay, so time for an important question. Did you enjoy this, and do you want more? If you'll notice, I didn't even touch Skellige, or the third act of the game, or Blood and Wine, or almost anything past the Isle of Mists other than that little Letho conversation. I could even put together another video on Velen and Novigrad, honestly. That is going to do it for today, but if you enjoyed, consider leaving a like as it helps get these videos out there, and if you want more like this one, let me know. They take a while, but if people are enjoying them, I'd be happy to do more. Also, if you like Witcher content and want more of it in your life, feel free to subscribe. As of recording this, we are about 1,500 subscribers away from 40,000, so it would be neat to hit that milestone soon. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.